what I am going to tell you about in this lecture, in this series of lectures is really about scientific plotting. Now, I know that you have gone through the plotting part earlier and this is indeed plots are a very important way of communicating to others and I am going to tell you about some aspects of it which you may have heard before, but also some aspects which you probably have not seen before. Of course, you know very well that the aim of graphical representation, for example, in uh, plots or graphs is really it gives you a pictorial representation of the data which is always very useful. Also, it allows you to discern the trends of the data, how things are varying as one of the variables changes, how does the other variable change. It allows you to see that much more easily than for example, if you have it in a table form. However, what I would really like to uh, emphasize in my talk is how do you fit uh, models to the data? How do you extract out useful physical mechanisms or the existing physical mechanisms from the data that you have? Also, how to extract out some of the important parameters of the physical models? And as we'll see in some cases, really plotting the data well also can lead to discovery of new phenomena. By the way, I should tell you that I will focus really on line plots in which we will plot typically a dependent variable on the y-axis versus an independent variable on the x-axis. So, for example, we won't be looking at bar charts and histograms and so on, really line plots only. Before I get into the scientific uh, plots part, let me just give you some general points for the plots. One is, which of course you would have come across earlier also, but it is worth repeating. Firstly, give figure captions in detail and the reason for this is that many readers look at figures very quickly to see if the paper is worth reading or not and if you do not have a good caption you may actually miss it out. Also, furthermore, I would say that in the caption, you may want to actually put in some important points and I have given some examples of this on the slide. Always refer to figures by a figure number and typically this should come before the figure is uh, introduced, not after. And finally, use colors if appropriate, for example, for online journals, and for presentations, but you have to be a little careful about the kind of colors you use. I will touch upon that in more detail in my full lecture later. Again, a few general points, choose the maximum and minimum values appropriately. The data range should be well covered. For example, in the picture shown here, it is really not a very good example of a plot because you are not using that full range properly and whatever little variation there is, is not captured in this uh, particular plot. A lot of blank space in a plot really means that you are not using the power of that particular plot very well. Always be a little careful about the zero on the axis. For example, here the lower most of the y axis is at 60. You have to be a little careful how you are going to deal with that. And again, I will uh, touch upon that in a little more detail later. The numbers on the scale should always be large and be easily legible. That is a very simple point, very obvious, but I found that in many, many cases it is not adhered to, partly because people tend to use automatic uh, software plots and they just use whatever is uh, the default value, whereas you should really specify what you need it to be. Similarly, choose numbers which are nice. For example, in this plot, you have 60, 65, 70, 75, which is very nice and easy. But I have seen many cases where the numbers put on the plots are some very odd numbers. And really, it is again because the plotting software is automatically assigning the numbers and that you have to be careful about and do not let it do that. Use your own numbers and put them in properly. Always give units, that is a very important point. Density, how dense should a plot be? 
Well, the answer is somewhere in between, not too dense and not too sparse. For example, if it's too dense, it's difficult to see details. If it's too sparse, you really, it means you have not used optimally the space available for you and it's probably not really uh, doing the best that it can. Here are two examples of plots. One of them on the left side, I would say, is a bit too dense. It has another problem also which I will touch upon now and that is you can see that because colors have not been used, it is very difficult to figure out the dots, the dotted lines and the dash lines and the dot dash lines and so on and it is not easy to tell what, which one it refers to. In fact, I would say if possible put the data on the curves rather than in a legend box and that is shown in the figure on the right. And the figure on the right we can think of as a good plot. It is clear, simple, easily legible. Also furthermore, color has been used and you can see that the 0 0.8, 0 0.5, etc. has been written next to the plot itself. Now that is not always going to be possible, but if at all possible, please do that rather than using a legend. It is much more easy to figure out what is happening. So what are the scales for plotting? Well, there are several scales. One is the linear scale, we have the logarithmic scale and that too in the logarithmic we have the semi-log or the log-log. We will also look at a very useful technique where you can transform the variables to make the plots look linear. Now why is that? Why would you like to have plots looking linear? The straight line is really a very easy way to, for us to figure out how things are going. It is easy for the eye to discern. And it is really a very effective way to communicate to others the relationship between two variables. And remember that this is really a course on communication and what is important is not only what you make of the data, but how effectively you are able to communicate it to others. A straight line is a very good method to do that. The next part of my presentation, I will tell you more about the scales for plotting and log, semi-log and the transformation and we will see how you can use those to extract the best information from your scientific data. So we will uh, go ahead now with the next plot and thank you for listening to this first part of my presentation.